Welcome to the second video for the second review mo module on algebra. In this video, we're going to continue with the previous video talking about factoring and distribution. The first thing I want to talk about here is factoring with roots. In the previous video, we factored things out of numerators and denominators of fractions in order to deal with them, make them a little bit simpler, a little bit nicer to work with. We want to do the same thing with square roots. So let's talk about how to factor with square roots. To pull out things, we, we can cancel off we can make the expressions simpler and easier to understand. I'm going to work this out with numbers first. So let's try and factor the square root of 40. 40 factors inside the square root is 4 times 10. The square root, like all exponents, which I will talk about in the exponent module, split up over multiplication. I'm allowed to split the square root up over multiplication. So the square root of 4 times 10 is the same as the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. And then the square root of 4 is just 2. So this is the same as 2 times the square root of 10. So by pulling the 4 out, I take its square root, and it becomes the number 2 outside. So I can simplify or write in a different form the square root of 40 as 2 times the square root of 10. And if there's a 2 to cancel off, or if that 2 is useful to me, then this might be a very, very nice thing to do. Here are some other examples. If I have the square root of 700, 700 factors is 100 times 7, and 100 has a square root of 10. So I can pull that 100 out of the square root and it becomes 10 outside of the square root, and I get the square root of 700 is the same as 10 to the square root of 7. And that's a little bit easier to understand as well. We might have a better sense of what square root of 7 looks like as opposed to square root of 700. 320 factors has 65, 64 times 5. 64 is a square number, its square root is 8. So if I take it out of the square root, it becomes its square root 8 outside. So root 320 is the same as 8 times root 5. Now let's see what this does for variables, because I want to do the same thing for variables. I eventually want to be able to take variables outside of square roots in order to work with them, manipulate them, cancel them off, whatever else I need to do with these variables. Here x is a common factor of this expression. In fact, x squared is a common factor of this expression, so I can factor out an x squared. If I distributed this back in, x squared times x squared, exponents add when I multiply the bases, that would be 2 plus 2 would give me the x4 originally, and then x squared times negative 1 would give me the negative x squared originally, so this is an accurate factoring. And then this is multiplication, this is multiplied by this, so I can split the square root up over the multiplication. That's a valid operation on square roots. And then this thing I'll leave alone. With numbers, I wrote square root 4 equals 2, or I wrote square root 100 equals 10, or I wrote square root 64 equals 8. And those were all positive, and that was straightforward. Here, I don't know if the variable is negative or positive. If the variable is a positive number, if the variable x equals 3, then x squared is equal to 9, and square root x squared is still equal to 3, and that's fine. But if the variable happened to be negative, if the variable had the value of negative 5, then x squared would be 25, and square root x squared would be positive 5. So if the variable started as negative, I've lost that negative. It's now become positive. Thankfully, we have a symbol that does this, the absolute value. So because I don't know whether the variable is positive or negative, I need this absolute value. And this is a really important subtlety when I take things out of square roots. When I take variables out of square roots, if I pull something squared out of the square root, I need to apply that absolute value there. Because the outcome of the square root implicitly is positive, and so if the thing that I started with was negative, got squared, became positive, took a square root, is still positive, I need to account for the loss of that negative. So that's what this absolute value is all about. This discussion of distribution and square roots um, leads me to talk a little bit about some cautions with distribution. And this, this comes out of observing students and some very, very common mistakes that I see all over the time. So if you can get in the habit of avoiding these mistakes, uh, you'll not only just make me very, very happy as a mathematician, you'll, uh, you'll fall into far fewer um, pitfalls and, and errors in your calculations. Distribution happens when I take multiplication or division and distribute 
over addition and subtraction. So this one quarter applies to both. I get one quarter of nine plus 15, the same as nine quarters plus 15 quarters. That one quarter distributes over the addition. Addition distributes, or multiplication and division distribute over addition and subtraction. People are tempted to distribute in all sorts of other places and it almost never works. So let me talk a little bit about other places that look like distribution. So in this circumstance, I have a square root. And it looks like we might be able to distribute the square root, split the square root up over the addition. Let's look and see if that works. So if I do the addition first, 16 plus 9 is 25. Then I do the square root. Square root of 25 is 5. If I split this up into two square roots, square root of 16 is 4, square root of 9 is 3, 4 plus 3 is 7. 5 is not equal to 7. So this step here must not have been a valid step. If I want to state this generally, I'll state it this way. We typically cannot distribute square roots. Square roots don't break up over addition and subtraction the way that this division broke up very, very nicely over addition and subtraction. So this is just a, a caution to be careful about the things that you want to break up over addition and, sub and subtraction, the things that look like they might distribute. Square roots certainly don't. Denominators don't. We talked about this in a video for algebra part one. If you looked at 1 over 2 plus 3, if you tried to split up this denominator, you'd get 1 fifth, which is not the same as 5 sixths. If I want to write this in general, 1 over a plus b is not the same thing as 1 over a plus 1 over b. And I have a few more of these because people try and do all sorts of these. In general, all exponents don't distribute. Um, a plus b squared is not the same thing as a squared plus b squared. Logarithms don't distribute. If you take a logarithm of a sum, it's not the same as the sum of the logarithms. Trig functions don't distribute. Sine of a plus b is not sine of a plus sine of b. And we can check this one if you wish by putting using radians here instead of degrees. If I put in pi over 2 plus pi over 2, well, if I split this up, if I were able to split this up, I would get sine of pi over 2 plus sine of pi over 2. On this side, I get sine of pi. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is pi. Sine of pi is 0. On this side, sine of pi over 2 is 1. I would get 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 is not equal to 0, so again, this thing that you might want to try to do doesn't work. So just a nice caution to remember, again, because it's such a common mistake, and some of these students do it all the time. Be aware that you, you'll be tempted to distribute things, and you should resist unless it's explicitly only multiplication and division distributing over addition and subtraction.